Hi, I'm Ian and welcome back to Astro Time Traveller. In this very short episode I'm going to show you some of the issues I've been having recently with satellites. Uh, particularly the other night I was imaging M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, and in my very second image I have counted 19 satellite trails going across a five minute exposure. So I'm going to show you that image. I'm going to show you how it occurred through Stellarium with the Starlink satellites mostly going across the image and show you how I process it through Deep Sky Stacker to uh, try and remove the satellites that go across an image. So stay tuned and see what happens. And if you've had more satellites going across any of your images, please let me know. So here's my first image one and already two satellite trails across the image as you can see quite strong there. And then when I go to image two, this is looking through my ASIR Pro, you can see not only a strong image across the centre of the galaxy but these lines of satellites all the way across the image. And when I count up the lines, I count up to 17 of individual satellites going across through a five minute exposure. And this is extreme, I've never seen anything like this before. And you can zoom in, you can see they're fairly faint, but they're there. These are the satellites going across. And these are Starlinks. The, uh, the strong line there is an old Starlink, I suspect, where it wasn't quite as well disguised. And the lighter ones are the new Starlinks. But they're also in other images, so they weren't in 3 and 4. But when I move forward, you can see they're in image 8 and in image 14. You can see further in image 23, they're there, 43. Uh, so quite through most of my uh, nights through 60, you can see 62 is quite strong, you can see across there, and 67 on the right hand side. So throughout all of those images. So I went back to Stellarium to see what was causing this. So I set up the timeline of uh, when I was actually imaging and set it running. And as you can see, you start to see the Starlinks going through my field of view. So I set up my EvoStar 72 field of view in the center there, right on M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, and let it roll. And as you can see from 2155 pretty much, the Starlink satellites start coming through the image. And that's what I got. That's why I got those 17 uh, lines going across the image. It's each of these individual Starlinks uh, coming through. And even though they're the lighter ones, they do make a little line through the image. So you can see them coming across here. I'll speed it up a bit so you can just see it going across. But I thought it was uh, a very clever how uh, Stellarium manages to show you this. And you could kind of uh, look at it beforehand so you know before you start your imaging what might be coming in your field of view. But clearly if you're imaging for five hours, that's really not practical to look through the whole five hours to prepare because these move pretty fast. So if you go through at a a minute movement or an hour movement you're clearly not going to see them but you can see them coming through pretty fast uh, across that image and even one coming from the other direction and that's the one that goes right across the middle of the galaxy which I think is the oldest Starlink because it left a, a stronger trail uh, in the actual image so I'll just zoom up a little bit faster and again just move them through I'm just moving my field of view to get it back as it was across the center of the uh, galaxy and you can see they just keep coming and they just keep coming. So I'm a great supporter of SpaceX and I think uh, what Elon Musk and are doing with um, the new Starship is gonna be really exciting. But the Starlinks are a real problem for astrophotographers, particularly the older ones, I think the newer ones. And then you can see another satellite going across the image, leaving that uh, line that went across diagonally across the image. So they can be sorted out, we can actually still move uh, the image forward without having them all left in it and I'll show you how I do that using Deep Sky Stacker in a second but uh, they are an increasing problem. So here I am, I, I, I stacked those eight images that only had satellite images in them and therefore as I've stacked them, this is now in Pix Insight and this is um, before stretching the image but having done a bit of uh, noise reduction but you can see with only the eight um, consolidated stacked images all having the uh, satellites in them, you can see the satellites are still there. However, if I then stretch the image and I put a bit of curves on to, to darken, I can effectively remove those satellite images 
from even the image where they, they appeared before they were uh, stretched. Clearly that might compromise the overall composition of your image, so you've got to be careful if you want to do that. But there is a way of doing that if you uh, have a very, very high level of satellites. Clearly this was eight images all with satellites in them. What I then did was I actually used all of my images, um, which were about 50, together with the two strongest, the number two and the 62, with the satellites. And here you can see Deep Sky Stacker. Deep Sky Stacker has completely removed the satellites, even the strong one that went through the center of the galaxy. And I used 100% uh, stacking, so it wasn't that they uh, didn't actually stack, they did stack all of the images. So you can remove them, even the strongest ones, but you've just got to be very careful doing so because uh, you could be left with them in your final image. So I would suggest to leave out the most strongest uh, of satellites in, that f in the stacking and just leave the ones that are much lighter.